Okay, coming up on Monday, we do have a quiz. So today we're going to be doing our notes for that quiz. Go ahead and write this down for me. Number one, a store is selling sweaters at 15% off their original price. What is the sale price of a sweater that's originally priced at $18? All right, does anybody think that they might remember how to do this kind of a problem? What do you think I should do? Okay, the idea that we learned a long time ago, the percent equation, P times of equals is. So what do I do to my percent? Change it to a decimal. Change it to a decimal, which would be? 0.15. 0.15. And then multiply times the total amount. What's the total amount? $18. $18. Okay, so basically all you're doing is you're multiplying the percentage by the regular price. All right, plug that into your calculators. What do you get? Two dollars and seventy cents. Now, is this the cost of the sweater? No. No. What does that two dollars and seventy cents mean? Off. Oh, that's the discount. That's the discount. So we are taking two dollars and seventy cents off of the price. Okay. But the question did not ask me what was the discount. It asked me what's the sale price. So if I go in there and I want to buy this sweater, how do I figure out what my price is going to be? You. What do you think? Okay, so what numbers should I put in? $18.70. Good job. Okay, it was $18. I get to take $2.70 off. What's the sale price, guys? $15.30. Okay, each of the examples that I'm doing today are going to be exactly like problems that we've gone over in the past that will be on your quiz on Monday and on your test on Tuesday. So we're trying to find the new price. It tells us the wholesale price is $20 or $22. So basically, some store went in and they paid $22 for an item. If you remember, we did a skateboard before. But they're going to give us a markup. It's 13% markup. So can you guys help me out with how to find the new price? Once again, P times of equals is. So what do I have to do to my percent? Change it to a decimal, 0.13, and multiply by the total, which is? $22. Addison, what do you get for the answer? Okay, $2.86. Now, as you know, we were finding it for a markup. So, Ashley, what should I do to find my answer for the new price? Okay, why would I subtract? Why would I add? It's a mark up, okay? So that means the price is going to go up. So it was $22. I have to add what the markup is, okay? Because they're trying to make a profit, so they marked the price up. Kayla, what's our answer? $24.86 is correct. Just remember, whenever you're doing um, any kind of a money problem, always make sure that you have two numbers after the decimal point and that you've got your dollar sign and decimal point. For your quiz, it's going to be very important that you know what the simple interest formula is for some of the problems that we have, but also there's going to be a question just like this. What is the simple interest formula? What is it, guys? I equals PRT. I equals PRT. Do you guys remember what that stands for? What's the I? Interest percentage. Percentage right. rate. Okay, it's not percentage for the P. Does anyone remember what that P oh. is? Profit. Principal. Okay, so the interest equals the principal times the rate times the time. Okay, so you just got to multiply those three together. So that brings me to my next question. What is a principal? This is not talking about the person who's in charge of our school. What is it talking about with the I equals PRT? Tati, what do you think? Okay, that's a great idea. It is the price that we start off with, but more specifically. The bigger price. Uh, typically in your problem, the principal is going to be the bigger price, but for a more specific definition, it is the amount of money that is deposited 
So say that I take it into a bank and I deposit or I put in $500, it's the amount of money that you deposit into a bank or the amount of money that you what? Borrowed. Okay, so if I take out a loan for $100, it's the amount of money that I am borrowing. So the principal, this is something you want to know, you're going to have to write out. It's the amount of money deposited or borrowed. Okay, so problem five is going to help us out with um, the problems three and four, what we just came up with, the simple interest formula and what a principal is. That's going to help us with this problem. So what is the simple interest formula that's going to help us find the unknown quality? I equals P times R times T. And now all I have to do, since I already told you what the interest, the principal, the rate, and the time is, we've just got to plug these numbers in. So what's my I? 980. 980. Ashley, what's my P? 2000 dollars Okay. Once again, guys, what does the principal stand for? Everybody, not just Mason. The amount of money deposited or borrowed, okay? Um, Addison, what's my rate? What's it tell me in the original problem that the rate is? We don't know what it is yet, so we're just going to keep it as an R, okay? Tati, what's my time? Five years. Five years, okay? Anytime that you see there's a variable in a problem, what's our goal? Get the, R by get the R by itself. What do I have to do before I can get R by itself? Divide by five. I gotta always do all the work on that side first though. Is there any work that I can do on this side before I do divide? What do I have to do to that 2000 and that five? You multiply it, okay? This right here is telling me multiply P times R times T. So this right here is telling us multiply 2,000 times R times 5. So let's multiply by what we know right now. What's 2,000 times 5? 10,000. And then just bring your R down. 10,000 times R equals, and we'll just bring down what our I is. We know that interest is still $980. Once again, my goal is to do what? Get R by itself. What do I have to do to get rid of that $10,000? Divide by $10,000. And what I do to one side, I've got to do to the other side so that I am fair. And when you do this, this should give you what your R would be. 0.098. Okay, 0 0.098. Now, if you remember, the rate for my answer that I want should always be a what? A percent. So how do I get 0 0.098 to turn into a percent? Move that decimal two times to the right. One, two. Now that's my new decimal. And what's the answer? 9.8 percent. So just remember, whenever you are giving me your rate, every time this right here, the rate should always come out as a percent. Okay? Sarah has $400 in her savings account, and she earns 1.55% simple annual interest. How many years will it take her to earn $12.40 in interest? So once again, we're still kind of doing the same idea that we've been doing the past couple problems. I want you to break down your information. I equals PRT. So let's just figure out what we know. Okay, do we know the interest? What is it? $12.40, okay? It tells us that how long is it going to take her to earn this in interest. So you can see right there, it does give me the interest. Ashley, do I know the principal? The amount of money that she deposited or borrowed? $400, okay? So like it was said earlier, that's typically going to be the largest number that's in the problem, but always double check, okay? She has $400 in her bank account, so she deposited it at some point. Uh, Jakari, do I know the percent or the rate? What is it? Okay, 1.55%. Remember, your rate will always be a percentage. And Kayla, do I know the time yet? Not yet. That's my unknown. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So now, once again, we're going to start with the formula. Addison, what's my formula? Okay. 
I equals PRT. I equals principal times rate times time. Kayla, do I know the interest? Um, Twelve dollars and forty cents. So basically, all I'm doing here is I am plugging these things in. So instead of an I, I'm putting that right there. Okay. So what's my principal, Mason? Four hundred dollars. Do I know my rate, guys? Okay, so here's the deal. Do I just take this right here and I stick it in as 1.55? Okay, we're taking 1.55% over 100. So basically that means you've got to change it to a decimal. How do I change 1.55% into a decimal? You're going to move that decimal point to the left two times. So it's going over 1, 2, stick that 0 in there, put your percent, and then what do I get? Okay, and do I know my time yet? No. Not yet, so just stick a T, all right? Keep those same variables there because that'll help me remember I'm looking for time when I find my answer. So we always want to do the work that's next to the variable first. So what work do I have to do before I can do anything else? Uh, mean, multiply. Multiply what? 400 times 0.0155. Okay, we got to do this work first. What is 400 times 0.0155? 6.2, and then I'm going to keep my T, equals, and I'm going to keep this $12.40 over here. Ashley, what do I do next? Divide what? Your goal is to get T by itself, so what should I do? Good job. Divide 6.2 by what? I get to divide 6 by 6.2 divided by, okay, divide it by 6.2 on both sides. This cancels out. Plug it into your calculator to find out what the answer is. Okay, $12.40 divided by 6.2 is 2. Now, I know this is my time, so time should always be in? Years. In years. So what's the answer, guys? Two years. Two years. Two years. Any questions on how to find that one? All right, let's move on. Number seven. What is the Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Excellent. Okay, that's a formula you're going to have to have memorized. It's going to ask you just like that. What's the Pythagorean theorem? And you got to write down A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. Problem eight. So anytime that I have a triangle that has a right angle, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to help me find an unknown side. So one more time, what is the Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared. Excellent. So you wanna to try to find out what's your unknown. What's the one unknown thing we don't know yet? We don't know B, so I'm just gonna keep it as B squared. The next thing that I always like to find is the C, because that's the one that kind of stands out. It's called the hypotenuse, if you remember. How do I figure out what the hypotenuse is? Um, the, uh, the opposite side of the right angle. Yeah. Okay, so there's the right angle. It's always going to be the opposite one, the one that's not touching. This one's touching there, this one's touching there. The 15 is opposite. So my 15, is that going to be the A or the C? The C. It is the C, okay, which means the only thing left for A is to be what? 10 squared, okay? 10 squared is? 100 plus B squared equals what's 15 squared? 225. 225. Now remember, my goal is to get B by itself. There's two things not allowing it to be alone, the 100 and the 2. Which do I get rid of first, the square or the 100? The 100, okay? You always get rid of the thing that's not attached to the variable. How do I get rid of that 100? Minus 100 on both sides. B squared just comes down. And what's 225 minus 100? 125. Okay, now your goal is to get B by itself. How do I get rid of a square? Do the square root, because that's the opposite of a square. So that means these two right here will cancel out. And I'm left with plain old B. And what's the square root of 125? 11.18. Okay, it's 11.18, but you've got to round it always to the nearest tenth. 
11.2 feet. Feet. Oh, feet, okay? Always look back to see if one of your sides is given to you with inches, centimeters, feet, whatever it is, and make sure you label that, okay? Let's go on to the next one, number nine. All right, so number nine says find the two square roots of the number. What's the square root of 25? Okay, it's five, and then you know whenever it asks you for two, you're going to give me the positive and the negative. Okay, go on to the next one. The square root of 46, just like always, what we've been doing for these, just give it to me rounded to the nearest tenth. What do you get, guys? Positive and negative, 6.8. Okay, 6.8. And then, as you know, you want two of them, so it's positive and negative. Because 6.8 times 6.8 equals 46. Negative 6.8 times negative 6.8 also equals 46. Number 10 says to evaluate the expression when z equals 5 and m equals 2. So this is where we're plugging in our substitutions. Instead of putting negative square root of 3 times z plus 1, I'm going to put the negative square root of 3 times what number? Um, 5. Because five. Five, it says right here that z equals 5. So I'm plugging in a 5 there instead. And always remember, if that negative is outside of the square root sign, you know your answer is going to be negative. Okay, so negative, keep everything, let's work what's underneath it. What's 3 times 5? 15, 15 and then just one. bring down your plus 1. What is 15 plus negative 1? 16. Negative. Okay, negative square root of 16. So once again, we know our answer is going to be negative. negative. And what's the square root of 16? 4. four. So your answer is negative 4. For the final question today, we're solving the equation. Your whole goal with every single equation like this is to get what by itself? X. The x or the variable. What should I get rid of first, the square or the negative 5? Negative 5. You always get rid of whatever's not attached, okay? Remember these two right here, it's like they're best friends. They're attached together, so keep them together as long as possible. What's the opposite of minus 5? Um, plus 5. What you do to the left side, you've got to do to the right side. We know that cancels out. <coughs> x squared comes down. What's 25 plus 5? 30. 30. So now I have to find the opposite of a square. What is that? Um, square root. Square root. Got to do things to both sides. X equals, what's five. the square root of 30? 5.5. 5. 5. 5. 5. Now here's one last thought that people forget about often. If you remember, I introduced the variable right here. So what does that do to my answer? It's not just 5.5. Positive and negative 5. All right, so just make sure that you're studying 9.7, 9.8, 11.1, and 11.3 for your quiz on Monday.